Welcome to Working for Women, the independent women's forum podcast, where we are changing the conversation about women and public policy for the better. Hello, this is Carrie Lucas. I'm president of the Independent Women's Forum. Thanks for joining me for this version of our Working for Women podcast. I'm thrilled to be here with um, with Inez Stepman. Inez, thank you so much. Um, Inez is the author of a new policy focus we have coming out at IWF on civil service reform. Um, so Inez, uh, you know, thanks for joining me. This is a topic that um, I think a lot of people don't know very much as much about. Um, so can you kind of start by telling us why you chose to take up this topic? Absolutely, and and thanks for having me, Carrie. Um, I think this is absolutely one of these really important topics that doesn't get discussed very often. Uh, but I think over time, a lot of Americans feel um, that their their vote doesn't seem to really change a whole lot in Washington. They vote for Democrats. They vote for Republicans. There's sort of this consensus in Washington. Not a whole lot of uh, things change, maybe around the edges, maybe in foreign policy. It doesn't matter whether President Obama is in the office, uh, Oval Office, or President Trump is in the Oval Office. 2.8 million civil servants basically go about their jobs, and their jobs include implementing policy that affects the lives of millions of Americans without much oversight at all. Yeah, you know, that's really interesting. I do think that there's uh, most people don't know that, that, that so many um, of our uh, government workers are there no matter what, and they kind of are, um, are you know, working on autopilot in a, in a lot of ways. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Because I know that there's, you know, I feel like a, a lot of people have probably heard um, about the different benefits that government workers enjoy compared to um, the, the average workers. But I don't know that everybody knows about the job protection. So I think that's one that's a little bit jaw dropping. Absolutely. So it is pretty much impossible to fire a federal civil service worker. OK, so a fraction, a tiny fraction, a thousandth of a percent of folks actually get fired from those kinds of jobs. Um, especially once they make it past their first probationary year um, and they become full-time permanent employees and they basically can't be fired. And in fact, I have some really eye-opening examples that I love to share. Um, so one of the folks in the VA, if, if everyone remembers, there were a ton of scandals in the VA and how poorly they were serving our veterans. Um, and so one of the sort of higher-up folks in, in the Caribbean VA uh, that deals with sort of the Virgin Islands, deals with Puerto Rico, deals with some of our, our territories. So he, he's an employee of the federal government working uh, for the VA, and he gets convicted of a crime in a, in a criminal court while on the job, right? So he commits a crime, in fact, uh, bribery and, and corruption. He commits, commits a crime while he's working on the job because it's not unrelated to his position. It's very intimately related to his position. Um, and then is convicted in a criminal court, it still takes two years to fire this guy. The, the American taxpayer pays him, <laughs> even though he's sitting in jail, for two years because that's how long it takes to actually go through the process to fire someone, even when you have literally a criminal court and a jury saying, this person committed a felony. Um, and that's the most extreme case, right? Um, for all kinds of uh, sort of lesser not doing their job well for Americans. It's just it's just way, way too much hassle and effort to fire some of these folks who are underperforming, who outright refuse to do their job. This is so bad. This problem is so bad that Congress in 2015 actually had to pass an entire piece of legislation amending the civil service rules so that you could, in fact, relatively quickly fire an employee for watching pornography on government computers while on the job. They had to to put in an act of Congress to make that possible. Um, because before it wasn't possible. It would take two years to fire someone if you caught them watching porn while on the job on government servers. Yeah, well, that's, you know, that's, that's just totally outrageous. It's just one of those things that, that defies common sense. And I think people, um, you know, people have trouble believing it. And the other thing that I think is, is kind of an important backdrop to this conversation is that this isn't just kind of a, a neutral um, a group of, um, of workers, that a lot of these folks are very political and one-sidedly political, right? What is, what, can you give us a little bit of information on the background on that? Sure. So we, we hear a lot about, for example, college professors being very, very left wing. But in fact, the civil service is just about as politically polarized. So um, in 2016, about 95 percent of donations that were given to political candidates in the 2016 presidential election went to Hillary Clinton. In the State Department, it was actually 99 percent. Um, 
So overwhelmingly, federal workers are Democrats or left-leaning, um, which was part of the basis why they were supposed to have all these job protections. It was supposed to be so we would have a politically neutral civil service, right? People who were just interested in doing a good job for the American people, and the politics would be set by political appointees and by elected officials who were responsible to the people. Well, the problem is our, our protect job protections for these civil servants has gotten so extreme that they no longer have to listen to political direction. So that's why you have things in the last couple of years, you've had incidents like hundreds of these um, federal workers actually gathering in a hotel to learn how to use their jobs to stop President Trump's agenda from going forward, to slow him down, to make it difficult for the political um, appointees that, that he's hired directly under him to actually carry out his agenda. But they can't be fired for that. So no business could ever operate like this. If, if some, the CEO, CEO wants something done, right, um, he tells the, the middle managers to do it. They tell sort of the, the rank and file employees. And if, if the rank and file employees say, no, I don't want to do that, well, they have to go out and find another job. That's not how it works in the federal government. Um, and that's allowed a group of people with incredible political bias and 95 percent political bias to basically continue implementing the policies that they like and slow walking changes that a president who's elected by the people um, might prefer to change or changes that he would prefer to make. Uh, and, and that's just not a power that our Constitution grants people who never have to stand before the voters, right? We want people who stand before the voters making these kinds of decisions. We live in a republic, ostensibly. And so this is one of those really core issues. It's not just about efficiency, although the efficiency would be very much improved to the federal government. It's really about whether or not we have a republic. And when we, the people, elect someone, are they actually able to implement their, their um, agenda, to use the powers that our Constitution grants to the various branches of government, or... Have they slowed off a lot of that power to unaccountable administrators who then cannot be fired by the people or by anyone? Yeah, that's I mean, that is absolutely outrageous. So, you know, obviously, this is one that I do think it's it's a shame. I'm, I'm kind of shocked at that this hasn't been higher on the list on the of um, conservatives to do to do list that this should really should be a priority for reform and get a lot more attention than it does. What, what, what is it that can be done, though? What does it take? This is does it require an act of Congress? Um, to, to reform some of these uh, these kind of fundamental issues? It really does require Congress to change the laws because Congress has enacted the job protections. So Congress kind of has to undo them. There are things around the edges that the Trump administration can do and um, has done, actually. Uh, they, they put forward a series of three executive orders dealing with union work rules and um, a couple dismissal procedures. Those things are tied up in the courts right now, whether or not they were able to be done by executive order. Um, that's the question in front. But in order to make real substantive change, Congress has to act. And, and I think this is actually an issue where we can find some common ground with the left. Now, they do enjoy a, a tremendous political advantage by having this class of folks um, who are overwhelmingly left-leaning carry out the policy. That being said, there are tons of Democrats who are also frustrated with the total inefficiency of the civil service, right? When you have no way to discipline your employees and, sure. and um, indeed to, to have them lose their jobs if they don't do a good job, uh, there are plenty of Democrats, I think, who are fed up with this as well. Uh, actually, Jimmy Carter complained about it. Bill Clinton complained about it. So even Democratic presidents have complained about the fact that the civil service is so inefficient. So I think there is common ground to be found here. And there are there are intermediary steps between what we have now and, say, a fully at will workforce the way that most private businesses run. We could we could start rolling back some of those ridiculously long dismissal procedures uh, and that would help a lot. And I think that's something we might be able to find common ground uh, between the left and the right on. Well, yeah, that's you know, that is encouraging. You would think that this is something that um, that a, that a liberal um, or somebody on the the left can't look at this and think that this is the way that the government should work. And then we do want people, you know, who are committing malfeasance if they're being um, negligent with taxpayers' money or abusing their their power. You know, this this shouldn't stand. So I, I would hope that this is one that that maybe can make some uh, there could be some bipartisan progress on. Um, well, Inez, you know, thank you so much for all this background. I think this is a really important conversation. Um, let's be sure to talk about this again soon. To our listeners, thank you for joining us today. Please be sure to come visit us at IWF.org for more information like this. You can check out information not only on civil service reform, but also on education, taxes, the budget, health care. 
at IWF. Please come see us at IWF, where all issues are women's issues. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast, please give it a thumbs up, share it on social media, or stop by IWF.org for similar content.